This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. One of the newly named co-chairs of President Obama's re-election campaign is openly criticizing the president's decision to accept super PAC funds. Former U.S. Senator Russ Feingold has described Obama's decision as, quote, dancing with the devil. At the time, Feingold was named the campaign election co-chair on Wednesday. The lead headline on his organization's website read simply, the president is wrong. Feingold's organization, Progressives United, went on to say, quote, the president is wrong to embrace the corrupt corporate politics of Citizens United through the use of super PACs, organizations that raise unlimited amounts of money from corporations and the richest individuals, sometimes in total secrecy. It's not just bad policy, it's also dumb strategy. The website has since been changed to highlight Feingold's recent appearance on The Daily Show. Former Senator Feingold formed Progressives United after he lost his 2010 re-election bid for the U.S. Senate. He'd represented Wisconsin in the Senate for 18 years. During that time, he wrote the landmark campaign finance law McCain-Feingold. He also opposed the war in Iraq, was the only senator to vote against the USA Patriot Act. Now Russ Feingold has written a book chronicling U.S. missteps in the decade after September 11th attacks. It's called While America Sleeps, a wake-up call for the post-9-11 era. On Wednesday, I sat down with Senator Senator Feingold, I began by asking him about his website's charge that the president is wrong. That had to do, I assume, with the issue of super PACs. I happen to agree with the president on, on the vast array of issues. I think he's a good president. I think he's going to win re-election and be a great president by the time he's done. But, you know, the president and I know each other. And he knows that uh, there are certain things I feel strongly about. In fact, he was very helpful as a senator on things like having a time frame to getting us out of Iraq, things like changing the Patriot Act and civil liberties, and also on campaign finance reform. So when he's going in the wrong direction on that, as a friend and an ally, I'm going to say, Mr. President, I don't think it's right. And uh, I'm pleased that he still wants me to be a co-chair of his campaign, because that's the way I'll always support him. Uh, when I think he's right, which is almost all the time, I'll be uh, vocal and strong in his support, and when I think he needs to change direction, I'll offer my opinion. And I think it's a big mistake to go down the road of unlimited, undisclosed corporate contributions. That's not Barack, who Barack Obama is. That's not what the Democratic Party should be. And I think it doesn't help him get reelected, and I think it delivers the Democrats as well as the Republicans to corporate power and corporate domination. So that's why Progressives United and I feel this way. So it says the president's wrong to embrace the corrupt corporate politics of Citizens United through the use of super PACs. It's not just bad policy, it's also dumb strategy, you say, about President Obama. Um, he seemed to change, said he will take super PAC money. What was the alternative? Well, the alternative is to run on what you really believe in. And, and that if you believe that the unlimited money is what actually wins elections, that's only in a case when you don't have a good product to sell in terms of who you are and what you are. The president has that. He's a capable, intelligent president. The economy is getting better. He's done so well in international matters that, that the Republicans are afraid to talk about it. That's part of what I mean by while America sleeps. They don't want to talk about it because he's doing so well. He doesn't need the, the taint of unlimited, undisclosed contributions to infect the good thing that he has going. I think it can hurt him politically, and not to mention the result is he's going to have people elected to Congress who will be so corporatized that he won't be able to get through the agenda that I really believe he wants, which is a more progressive people-oriented agenda. So I think it's bad politics and bad policy. Now, you took PAC money when you ran for the Senate, uh, the race against uh, Ron Johnson that Johnson won. What's the difference between <laughs> Well, PAC money is, first of, all, money first, of all, I take less, first of all, I take less than 10 percent when I ran of just PAC money. PAC money is completely disclosed. A, a huge organization can only give a total of $10,000 over six years. 10000 versus $10 million. And so I, don't th I think PACs actually were an innovation that allowed groups to come together. And if you limited how much you got totally from PACs, it's perfectly fine. Now, a super PAC is the complete opposite. A super PAC can take unlimited amounts of money. Uh, it can take money from corporate treasuries now after Citizens United, from labor treasuries, something that was never allowed uh, for like a century, ever since Teddy Roosevelt signed the Tillman Act and the Taft-Hartley Act with regard to unions. So it is a, a, frankly, just a monstrous 
contraption, and, and Stephen Colbert has done a brilliant job of, of sort of pointing out what it is in a funny way, that it is a complete joke that these are somehow independent from the candidates. You know, it's the former chief of staff goes over there, and they don't even have to wink at each other. It's corrupting and it's destructive to the idea of every person's vote counting the same. So PACs and super PACs are night and day. You're running Progressives United now. How are you fighting Citizens United? If you feel that it should be done away with, what's the best strategy? Yeah, I'm the founder of Progressives United, and I work with an excellent group in both Washington and Wisconsin, who are the people that are really running it. Um, look, we have a multi-tiered strategy. The most important thing, the long-term goal, is to get rid of the Citizens United decision. Some people think you do that by a constitutional amendment. I don't think that's particularly practical. I think the more likely thing that will work is overturning the decision. That's part of the reason I want to reelect President Obama. That's the only chance we have to get a couple of justices in the next few years who will do what any decent lawyer would do, which is overturn this awful decision. But we don't leave it at that. There's also a legislative agenda that we're working on that will limit the effects of Citizen United, disclosing, requiring disclosure of these contributions, which I suspect in some cases could be coming even from foreign sources. Public financing of both congressional campaigns and fixing the presidential system. Getting rid of the Federal Elections Commission, which is co completely doesn't work. It's a joke. We need a real enforcement agency. Having a tougher law defining what really is coordination between an independent group. All well, of explain what you mean by getting rid of the FEC. Well, the FEC is a farce. It has equal numbers of Democrats and Republicans, and it's gotten to the point where they never want to enforce the law. So what happened recently, in a number of cases, the Democrats on the commission agreed with the staff's recommendation to fine and penalize certain Democrats for, for certain campaign violations. And the Republicans refused. <laughs> to fine the Democrats. To fine the Democrats because they don't want any rules. They don't want any laws. So John McCain and I drafted a bill that I think the Brennan Center here and others have, have talked about, which is to create a real enforcement agency with an administrative enforcement mechanism, not a deadlock situation. You know, it's great to have good laws. It's great to pass McCain-Feingold, which is still the law of the land. It'll be great to overturn Citizens United and get the genie back in the bottle, but you still have to actually enforce the law. What's the si situation right now, I mean, is all these campaigns know there's no enforcement. So that's part of it. But the other thing I want to say about Progressives United is we engage right in these campaigns. We call them as we see them. We point out that, that Santorum and Gingrich are actually going to the Super PAC events themselves. We point out that the president what shouldn't. What do you mean, going to the Super They are literally PAC? special guests at the independent Super PAC events on their own behalf. It's a joke. Uh, we talk about what the president has done. We, I mean, we, the president says he won't go to the actual event, and right. Michelle but Obama won't members, go. But, but his, his cabinet, cabinet members will. They don't belong there. We, we, we endorse candidates. We believe will do the right thing with regard to the issues we care about. We, one of the first, the first person we endorsed was Elizabeth Warren. And through our political action committee, we raised a, a significant amount of money from small contributors for a person like that, who I think will be one of the great progressive voices in the country. So it's a multi-tiered attack on the domination of corporate uh, corporations on our system of government. Uh, you talk about the changing of the Supreme Court if President Obama is reelected, appointing members of the court to the Chief Justice John Roberts, uh, proudly with the majority on Citizens United. You, as a senator, uh, voted for John Roberts. Are you sorry? You know, John Roberts has really uh, disappointed me on this point. Um, there was a while there where he was refusing to overturn McCain-Feingold, and he never actually did do that. And Scalia actually sort of chastised him for that. I thought there was some chance that he was going to do what he said. He said to us, and I, many liberal lawyers in the country called me, said he's a good guy, and when he says that they're going to, he's going to call the balls and strikes, well, he hasn't done anything of the kind. And you should see how defensive his opinion is. It's worth reading in Citizens United. It's a concurring opinion. It's the most defensive thing I've ever seen. He keeps trying to explain how this really wasn't overturning the law and precedent. Uh, it's phony. And so I am deeply disappointed in his performance, and I'm hoping, since he's a relatively young man, uh, that he will uh, change course. And I, I would love to see him realize that what has been done in Citizens United is a great damage to the court itself. It's not just to the campaign system. Along with Bush v. Gore, these two decisions have brought the United States Supreme Court into discredit in the eyes of the American people, and that's a very dangerous thing. Former Wisconsin Senator Russ Feingold has been named one of 35 co-chairs of President Obama's reelection campaign. We'll come back to the conversation in a minute.